We're talking about prevention today, and this is the first tactic of right effort. Basically, it's stop trouble before it starts. This is always the best situation when you're dealing with negative aspects of the mind, the emotional structure. So you have to also raise energy to do this. And the Buddha is very clear that you can raise energy. There's all kinds of philosophical schools that are wonder whether anybody is actually free to change themselves or not. The Buddha is very much on the side that you can. You can make effort and the Buddha says, I would not tell you to make effort if you couldn't. So there is an aspect of will involved and there's an aspect of stirring up energy. So energy and effort are both involved in this soup. And so he's making a demand on you. It's not something that's going to just take a pill and you will change. This is something that you produce from within. And this kind of energy and effort has to be done early in the game. And that means that you've got to involve mindfulness. Because we're interested in stopping the rising of the five hindrances. If we can stop the rising, prevent the rising, then we will not have to deal with the tactics of removing, which will be in the next talk. So how do you do this? It's primarily through sense restraint. And uh, this has to be explained. This is not really a matter of sensory deprivation. You're not going to walk around with your eyes closed or put earplugs in. There's certainly nothing wrong with low sensory experiences or sensory deprivation. That can be quite relaxing. But more or less, you're going to have to function in this world with your eyes open, your ears open, your nose and tongue and sense of touch will be experiencing the sensory world. So what do we mean by sense restraint? It's possible to not look at things and not listen to things, but when the things fall in the spectrum of the sight, we have to ask mindfulness not to uh, generate interest in either the fault or the beautiful in these objects. Now, this is advice which just goes against the general conversation, the general attitude of the world. We're supposed to be interested in everything and how ugly and problematic and critical uh, things are and how beautiful and wonderful and exhilarating things are. This is, the con this is the tone of conversation in the world. This is not the tone of conversation if you ever want peace in your life. It's not the way the world goes. It's in the opposite direction. And this is quite a shock to hear. This, most people are perplexed. How do you live? What's the point of the exercise if you're not going to be invested in uh, the, the ugly and the beautiful? What, what, how do you function? Actually, you will be experiencing a different type of beauty the beauty of tranquility and peace in your emotional structure. It's not that we're trying to be dead or indifferent. We're trying to find a, a level of serenity which is untroubled by the world. So I'll give you one uh, simile uh, which the Buddha gives. There's a prisoner who has uh, in the past been uh, very dangerous, problematic, and he's been in prison for quite some time. The guards say, uh, his sentence is uh, coming up, should we let him go or not, or should we just execute him? The king says, let's find out whether he's reformed himself. Let's have him walk across a crowded fairground. And you know how in the crowded fairground, when one of the reasons why they're there is to watch the most beautiful girl in the county uh, dance on the stage. And that brings out the 
farmhands and the louts. And they tend to be drunk as well and not a uh, pleasant company. Now we're going to have that prisoner walk across the fairground, the crowded fairground, with the beautiful girl dancing on stage and the louts in the audience making rude remarks. Now, if he can do that uh, without spilling a drop of a bowl of oil filled to the brim, he is free. Now, he's going to have to carry that bowl of oil filled to the brim and not spill a drop. That's how his attention span is required. And if he, of course, if he gets distracted by the girl on the stage or the louts in the audience, He's going to spill a drop. And I want one of you to walk behind him with a sword. If he spills a drop, cut off his head. If he makes it across, he's free. So this is the heightened condition. The Buddha says, now monks, or any practitioner, that's the way to practice attention. The beautiful on one side, the ugly on the other side, you can't afford to be interested in. If you get lost in it, you lose your life. Of course, maybe for us, it's not the physical life that we lose. There is nobody with a sword behind us. But it's our possibility of the life of happiness and peace that we lose. If we don't understand how important it is to to uh, have enough attention span and mindfulness to stop with this endless tangle and magnetization. So basically, there's positive and negative in the magnetic field. And if you could be a type of metal which is not responsive to this, then you're unaffected by it. So you're depolarizing yourself from the beautiful and the ugly, which you're sticking to both in both directions. Sometimes it's the same thing. You're in love with somebody and you're in a f huge argument. You hate them. It's a love-hate relationship. It happens split seconds apart. Love, hate, love, hate, love, hate. This is uh, a great trial. And of course, this is the nature of sorrow and suffering. So if we have a chance to get transcend this, it's going to be through polished mindfulness and attention and wisdom. And the wisdom is, do I understand why I shouldn't engage in these things to begin with? Have I told my mindfulness not to do it? If you don't inform your capacity to attend, it won't do these things. But if, you're, if you have sorted it out, thought through this and seen the downside of this investing in negativity and the, the attraction, you then have it wisely informed yourself. This is called wise attention, and it is the most powerful emotional support you can find for your uh, search for happiness. So if you can manage to inform your mindfulness and then train your mindfulness to do this, you will experience a total transformation of life. You have found the secret. And uh, you might not even have to deal with these hindrances. But if you cannot stop trouble before it starts, I'm going to talk in another talk about how to stop it after it started. And that is the second part of this prevention or the removal of unwholesome mental states. But for now, if you can just remember that simile and exert your uh, energy and uh, efforts towards this, your life will be transformed.